All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Justin Brightup. Hope that lens is cleaned well. Um, I am taking the bike over to get it uh, inspected for the VIN number so I can get it licensed. I haven't been told that there's any fees for getting the VIN number, so hopefully that's true. Hopefully I don't have to pay any fees for that, but as far as license plate and stuff, that's where I'm supposed to pay for everything, I guess. Um, anyway, so let me show you what I did. So I watched a video on YouTube where uh, somebody fit a motorized bike in the back of a Crown Vic, and a Mercury Grand Marquis is basically the same size and shape as a Crown Vic. So I thought I should be able to fit my motorbike in here, especially since the frame and the bike are so small. And so what I did, I probably should go around the other side of the car, but you can see where I did that. I put a uh, ground cloth in there or paint cloth or whatever in the back because it was clean because all my tarps were kind of dirty. I didn't want to get that dirt in the car. So I just put that down. I also put down uh, one of my gray, um, I'll have to show you guys, one of the gray um, seat protectors I got in the mail for free to review. I forget who that's made by, um, but I could go look at the box. But um, anyway, because I figured, you know, I want to protect everything, the seats, whatever, and something could poke through the plastic or whatever. So and my headlights there in the box because I got to have everything, the mud flaps and, you know, fenders and all that. And they're not all on the bike right now because I wanted to get it in here and because other stuff I was doing. So I just I want to make sure it's all there. Here's the seat protector here you can look these up on my youtube channel i got black and gray uh, for cars these are great um they just the only problem with these is they're supposed to snap to headrests and there's no headrests so um you'd have to like take the seat out and hook it behind or something i don't know i just put the seat belts through them that kind of helps hold them up and then i got all this plastic and so as you can see the rear or rear wheels here front wheels gone the engine everything i cracked the windows because i don't want uh fuel vapor building up inside the car and uh, basically I did drain the gas tank but there's still some vapor going on and I'm guessing I'm just guessing that that carburetor is probably leaking whatever was in the bowl because it's tipped on its side like that so it's a good thing I got that plastic there um, but yeah I painted everything black everything's looking good I cleaned this off with paper towels and an air compressor because it's cold it's too cold to turn water on and stuff outside so um, that's why I use paper towel and air compressor, and that worked pretty well uh, for just getting everything clean. The paint job on the uh, on the gas tank uh, isn't that great. Um, I mean, gas wears through it, stuff. It's it's kind of scratched up real easy and stuff. So I might end up painting that, but um, everything else is pretty awesome. Everything else works. So um, I did take apart the front brake caliper when I took the uh, front tire off. I put all that in the trunk front tire. I took the um, cranks off the, the pedals off the off the cranks up there so they wouldn't be a problem. Um, and I got all my tools and stuff in the trunk. So hopefully that's all going to work out. Hopefully the uh, state patrolman uh, proves everything. I'm assuming he will. The only thing I've got concerns about is the uh, weight slip, the certified weight slip, because it's a handwritten one from the Pomeroy uh, place here. And I don't know if he's going to approve that or not, but at least I got it done. So otherwise, if he doesn't approve that, the whole trip might be for nothing. I don't know. But um, anyways, there it is. And is that the same as the VIN number? Okay. Scuff it up or something?
right, ladies and gentlemen, I got the, whoa, I had it. It's the registration and the license plate with the magic stickers. And so, let me explain a couple things. So first of all, you can't just put this in your glove compartment. You've got to have it with you when you're on the bike somehow, like in your pocket or somewhere in some sort of document holder or something. Uh, so this could get worn out. You got to be careful with this. And then we got the Mr. License Plate. Okay. And so anyways, let's see if I can put this back. Does this have a VIN number on it? Yeah, this had the VIN number on it. Okay. So I went to, as you've probably seen earlier in the video, I went to the uh, Washington State Patrol's uh, inspection place over in Clarkston, Washington, in Soton County. And... I did a mountain of paperwork that I've already talked about. Then he printed some more paperwork and filled that out. And he put a sticker on my bike, which you saw, which has the VIN number. Now, there's a little bit of a problem with that. So, uh, first of all, it wouldn't stick. He had to clean it. He had to use a torch to get the bike hot enough to get... And then it stuck and then everything was fine. But the problem is, is that that sticker can be removed... And they're claiming that if it gets removed, I have to get another one, regardless of whether or not it's punched into the frame. Now, uh, the VIN number is not punched into the frame yet. And so I'm going to have to get a tap and die set or something. I think I know someone who has one. And I'm going to have to put the VIN number somewhere on the frame, maybe in the front part under the... I put it anywhere, really, um, as long as it's not going to be covered up, as long as it works. But right now, the everything's under the engine. Here's license plate. So what's next, right? How do I get this on the bike and all that? Well, you can, I've seen videos where people hang these up here off the front of the bike and that's something you could do. I don't think it's the right thing to do, but you could do it if you, you know, that's all you could afford. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is putting a rear rack on here and I'm going to be using some brackets and stuff I bought, which you'll see in the video. And I'm going to have this and a vanity plate that's like, you know, not a real plate that I got that has something on it, you know, that I like. And what's kind of funny is this license plate number, this was randomly handed to me. I just walked in there. This is the one they handed me. So 1E5157. Do you see something there in geek speak? You might. J-E-S-U-S-7. Now, I don't know. Maybe there's another number for you. I, I don't know. But anyways, I just thought that, that was kind of funny because my vanity plate says Jesus is the way. And I think I'm going to hang this below the vanity plate. Like, have vanity plate and then this one or something. I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But anyways, so let's talk about what's next. And there's somebody out there that watched this that says he doesn't think that's cool because he doesn't like God or whatever. Well, that's your problem. Okay. But, uh, oh, I didn't tell you guys. So the Washington State Patrol inspector told me that apparently in the northeastern part of, or sorry, southeastern part of Washington State, I am the first man that he knows of, or if you're a corporation person, uh, to ever get a license plate and registration for a motorized bicycle, okay? It's definitely illegal not to have it, okay? And people are figuring that out. They're getting pulled over. But what's happening is, is that the people I spoke to on the internet kept telling me you have to become a dealership, and you have to pay a whole bunch of prices, have a dealer's license and all this to do this. I just proved that's not true, okay? You call the Department of Licensing, you go to my videos, you got all the information on how to do this, okay? And again, you want to call them, talk to them first before you pick your engine kit out, all that other stuff, make sure that they approve of it, and then you're good to go. And that's what I did. Um, anyway, so what's next on the bike? That's what we're talking about. So we got the rear rack, but we got some other things we got to go over too. So um, this thing on the front, this extra thing that sticks out that I can put the headlight on and stuff, it's moving up and down, as you can see. Uh, it does, you know, touch one of these cables, and it's riding on the cable, which will hold it in place for right now, but it still needs to be, like, re-glued. And um, so I tried Loctite on this before, but I couldn't get very much on there because the bottle didn't work right, the tip didn't shoot it out. So um, I'm going to have to do this again, try it one more time with the Loctite. I don't know if it's going to work. And uh, then hopefully this flop will stop, and the headlight will just sit there. But right now it's actually pretty solid sitting on the throttle cable. So, I mean, I could technically just leave it the way it is and try it out, so maybe I'll do that, but I'd like to glue it again. Um, the other thing, let's see, where does the speedometer-odometer go? 
It's this is toast. This is junk. She says like two zero one four right now. This is junk. I had it on it for the inspection because I had to have one on it for the inspection to prove that I purchased it and all that. But this this I can't use this. Okay, for lots of reasons. So I did a video you saw that it reset and stuff. But also the mount is no longer uh, working. I can't put this in the mount like I try. Maybe it'll work right now, but. I tried putting it in here and twisting it and I can't do it because there's things in the way and it just it won't I won't go on there. So this is gonna go and for speedometer odometer I think right now I'll just use my cell phone. Uh, so that means all this and all the stuff that came with it is coming off the bike. Now there are brands of these that do work. Um, I've been told by uh, the Bikeberry Facebook group there's like a Garmin one of these that works or something or German sorry German version of this. That works. I don't remember the, the name, but there are ones you can use a Garmin, you can use a cell phone, um, you can use uh, like look up the Digi HUD. I, I have a Digi HUD uh, speedometer I reviewed. Technically, I can put that on here as soon as I get a power source, which means I need like the front basket on here. Then I could put like a power bank or something in there, and I have a Digi HUD speedometer that I could put in a cell phone holder mount, and I could use that instead of cell phone, which I think I'll prefer to do. And it uses the GPS rather than anything else to tell, you know, how fast you're going. And it lights up so you can see it at night and everything. I think that might be the way to go. And I don't have to buy anything. Whoopee! All right, so that's that's good. Okay, I'm not putting the rear fender on um, yet because uh, I've got to move the tail lights and signal lights uh, to the back of the um, of the bike rack on the back. That's what I want to do anyway, and then because if somebody's sitting on the bike rack or something, or I put something there, then you can't see the the rear lights. So I want on the back of it, and then this is going to go on there with the brackets and whatever, and it should be done. Okay, so that's the plan, and that's just the beginning. Okay, because this is just the beginning stage. I'll tell you how much uh, now because I got the advanced motor kit and all that. All of the stuff on the bike uh, ended up costing. Um, like 470 some dollars okay and if I would have got the basic two cycle kit or the four stroke kit or whatever uh, yeah basic two cycle I think is like more like 120 some dollars so I could have saved like maybe $80 or so doing this and we'll talk about all those costs later but keep in mind I did do some extra things I got the extra exhaust system which turned out I had to have it because the normal one wouldn't fit the stock one wouldn't fit and I got the billet chain spring uh, the old tensioner there for the, the chain. Um, and that's also important um, because, but you don't have to have that, okay? You don't have to have chain tensioner, you can use the regular one. Um, I actually ended up using both chain tensioners. Um, I was wrong, and people have called me out on it when I did my first review or unboxing video of the kit because uh, you shouldn't use the standard chain tensioner as a spring one. Uh, as I saw somebody do by mounting it to the side of the engine, it's just a bad idea. And so what you need to do is, uh, you still need to use it because what I found is, is that even though, okay, during break-in, the chain stretches, right? Which means you need something to pick up the extra slack, which is what the chain tension or the spring chain tensioner does. But the spring chain tensioner does not hold tension when the, at the moment that the engine is starting. When the engine is starting, the top part of the chain that goes between the engine and the rear sprocket gets slack in it and that's when it can come unglued. Now it can also do other things. So not only can the chain come off the sprockets but it can also get slack. The slack can cause it to jam up inside the engine. Uh, you have a link sticking out in there and it gets all jammed up. You don't want that. Uh, I, I had that happen when it came off. The other thing, of course, and if it ever jams up it can screw up your spokes and you might have to get a new wheel. But um, the other thing to remember is I did the half link on the rear chain and that does cause a whole bunch of problems unless you know what to do and I have a whole video you can watch on how to fix the half link problem and it's in my list I don't know what part it is if it's in the 20s or the teens or what but um, the thing is there is you need some washers you need some spacers and you got to make sure you, you put the chain link on facing the right the half chain link facing the right direction uh, with the pin out side the bike not in towards the motor and also on uh, as far as the little pin that goes through the pin you know and then uh cotter pin or whatever and then um 
Also, the master link, you want the part of that, obviously, that you change and mess with to be out towards you instead of towards the bike as well. Just makes life a lot easier. I ended up putting the chain on backwards by mistake when I put it back on, so I had to take those off and flip them around so I could put it back on. And not just that, but I had the, I had the half link backwards and it actually jammed inside the, the engine. The other thing with the half link, um, when it, even though uh, it's clearing and it's turning and everything's fine, it's actually still rubbing up against the engine itself. And I know that because when I took everything off to put the chain back on, take it off and all that, I found a whole bunch of metal filings in the bottom and it, it was clear, you know, metal had just been freshly scraped off there. So the sooner that the chain stretches out and we can get that half link off there, the better. And hopefully it does stretch out enough for that. Uh, we still have to break this in. So if I quit talking and get to work, um, I might be able to ride this by tomorrow morning. Um, if I keep talking and did dialing or whatever, I might have to wait till tomorrow, uh, you know, in, later on. But uh, anyway, so that's what I'm going to be doing. It's going to be fun. I got to put the gas back in and everything. Uh, when the bike is in here, it does not have gas in it because if it did, uh, I couldn't get it in and out of here without slopping gas around. Uh, not because of the lid, but because, well, yes, partly because of the lid, but because I have to pick the whole bike up kind of and maneuver it in weird ways to get it in and out of here. So uh, it just wouldn't work out with having the gas in there, have top heavy and all that fun stuff. So anyways, uh, I'm going to get to work. I'm going to take that uh, the lighting off, put the rear rack on, put the lighting back on. All that fantastic stuff. All right. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And just push you. Please click those links in the description of the video. Consider giving us a donation on Patreon. Check out ChristianCourse.com. All that good stuff. But make sure that you check out How to Win in Court. All right.